Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if it's your first time checking us out and I know for a lot of you that is the case. Hey, let me tell you the truth, building a custom home, it is not all rainbows and unicorns. It's not a perfect process. So today we're gonna cover the five worst things about building a custom home. All right, so hey, like I said today, we're gonna to talk about those five worst things about building a custom home. But before we get into that, let me just remind everybody, our channel is all about everything building a custom home. So the process, uh, the finances, the construction of it, whatever it might be, we know it's a huge decision to think about building a custom home. And we wanna do all we can to get that information out to everybody so that you have the knowledge to make the best decision. If it's for you, if it is for you, how do you go about that process? Um, so like I said, just if that's good information for you, take the time, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell so you get all the notifications. We're going to start posting new content every week just to really help everybody through this process. And let me also say that we do build here in Colorado. So if you're thinking about a new custom home in Colorado, we would love the opportunity to have a conversation with you about that. So, all right, let's get into the five worst things about building a custom home. And this is, I'm going to talk from experience a little bit here because my wife and I have been through this process. We just wrapped up a custom home build about a year and a half ago or so. GC the project myself, so kind of got that in-depth knowledge of what this process is like. So the five worst things, number one, it's gotta be the finances. And not just talking about the cost of a custom build, which can be kind of expensive, but the finances as far as kind of the logistics of the finances. So I'm gonna talk through this at kind of high level, and please, if you have any questions about this stuff, reach out, contact us, happy to answer anything I can, or hit us up in the comments too. So on the finance side, a lot of times, most times, whenever you build custom, you're going to have a couple different gates that you're going to go through. And there's really three main gates. One is going to be the financing for the land. So if you're not buying the land cash, you're going to have to get a land loan to purchase the land to build the home on. The second part you're going to have to do is going to be the construction loan. So the loan that you're going to get from the bank to actually go through the construction process to build the house. And then at the end of construction, once you have all of your permitting done and you're approved to move into the house, then you're gonna have to get your permanent financing, like a 30 year fixed mortgage, for example. So there's kind of three main financial things that you have to do before you get to your, you know, when you get to the end state of, hey, I've got a 30 year fixed rate mortgage now and I'm in my house. So let me talk through just a little bit more detail about that. So. Like I said, for most people, one of the great things about building a custom home is you get to pick the location. So you're probably searching for a lot, you're working with maybe a local realtor or maybe with the builder that you've chose to build with, but you're looking for that perfect lot. You find the lot, you identify it. Maybe it's even a lot that the builder that you're gonna work with has, they already own it. Typically, most builders will want you to purchase that lot from them as kind of step one in the process. Or if you find a lot somewhere else, you're gonna have to buy that lot from whoever's selling it. Like I said, some people can buy it cash, some people use a line of credit maybe against their existing home to secure that land. Or the third option and probably the most common is people uh, you secure a land loan. So the bank is going to give you the money, loan you the money to buy the land. Now land loans, whenever you get them, it's not going to be like a 30 year fixed mortgage. It's going to be sometimes interest only. Sometimes there's a payment schedule associated with it where you're paying a little bit of principal. But most banks want to see you start your build within 12 months, sometimes up to 24 months. So if you have a loan on the land, just kind of keep in your mind, the bank is probably going to want you to start that process pretty quick within a year, maybe two years at the most. Now, of course, if you own a cash, you can take your time. You really don't have to worry about that. So that's step one is getting that land loan. Now, whenever you go through the custom build process, most builders work this way where, you know, they don't just work for free through that design and kind of pre-construction services part of it. There's a lot of work that goes into getting the home ready on paper before you actually punch a hole in the ground and start digging and excavating. All that process, typically you can't get your construction loan yet because you don't have blueprints that are buildable, ready to go that you can show to the bank that they can do their appraisal off of and see how much they want to loan you for it. So for those pre-construction services, most times you're gonna to have to have that cash on hand to pay for those. It varies greatly by region and by builder as far as what those services cost. But I think $50,000 is kind of a pretty good estimate because you're gonna have uh, designer, architect, a little bit of engineer cost in there, all those different services that are needed to get through the design process to where you actually have blueprints that are ready to build. So those are stamped by the engineer, approved by your local municipality and ready to go. 
I tell people to think $50,000. Like I said, sometimes it's going to be less, sometimes it's going to be more, but it's a rough number to think about. So, so far we've had our land cost to buy the land. And remember with that land loan, you're going to have to put a down payment, typically about 20% down for your land loan. Of course, these are rough numbers, varies by individual and by institution. So figure 20% down for your land. Now you've got about $50,000 in pre-construction services. So the, whatever that adds up to, that's about the amount of cash on hand at a minimum that you would have to have or potentially a line of credit that you could maybe pull from as well to help fund that. Then once you have those buildable plans ready, now it's time to get your construction loan. So you talk to the bank, whoever it is you decide to work with, they work through that process and they give you a line of credit, a construction loan to build the home. And once you go through the 12 month, 18 month, however long it takes to actually build the home, the construction part of it, you're gonna be using that loan for that process. And then once you get to the end, then you're gonna take that construction loan and you're gonna pay it off or roll it into a 30 year fixed mortgage or a 15 year fixed mortgage, whatever it might be. But most people roll it into a 30 year fixed mortgage. And then it's just like a regular loan, a regular mortgage you would have probably on the house that you have right now. So the finances, as you can see, there's it's not as simple as, hey, I'm gonna go buy a house and I'm gonna get a 30 year fixed mortgage right off the bat and that's all I have to worry about. There's several financial things you have to think through and then also thinking through the amount of cash on hand that you have to have or available line of credit to fund yourself as you work through the process. So number one thing, finances. It's not the same as buying a regular house and you've gotta understand those details and make sure you're comfortable with it. Number two worst thing about building a custom home, so many decisions to make. It's decisions about it's everything from once you get this perfect lot, it's the lot you've always dreamed of. Now you've got to figure out where do I want my house on this lot? How do I want my house oriented? And it's going to get stressful because you're going to think, oh my gosh, like the, the builders here with survey stakes and we're going to pound some stakes in the ground. And that's where my house is going to go. That's where they're going to dig the hole. Once they dig the hole after it gets surveyed, like there's no change in it now. So you've really like the decisions start all the way from how your house is going to be positioned on the lot, how it's going to be oriented. And then it just goes on from there. What kind of tile do I want? Carpet, paint, light fixtures, plumbing fixtures. Where do I want my doors at? Which way is my, is my door going to swing? So many decisions to make as you go through this. But that's one of the great and honestly fairly fun things about building a custom home is you get to design it and you get to decide. You get to make all those decisions. Now, I will say a really great custom home builder that does this day in and day out is going to help you through this process. Don't feel like you're out there trying to figure everything out by yourself. They're going to be standing on the lot with you trying to figure out, hey, what's the best way to put the house? Their designer is going to be talking with you. Hey, those paint colors and that tile you pick, that looks terrible together. Don't do that. Here's maybe some other options you should think about. So a great builder is going to walk you through that process. But at the end of the day, they're also going to leave it up to you and say, hey, here's our recommendations. Here's some thoughts for you to consider. You make the final decision and you let us know. If you really want that tile to go with that paint, we'll put it in the house for you. So just realize there's going to be a lot of decisions from the time, like through the design process can be really intense because now you're trying to trying to visualize this house, but it's just on paper and you're sketching it out and you're going back and forth with the architect and you think you like what's there, but you get nervous because you're like, man, this looks good on paper, but am I really gonna like the end state result of it? That's where 3D modeling and that kind of, those types of um, things that you know technology has given us now that a great custom builder is gonna have the ability to do is to give you a 3D model. So you can kind of walk through the house virtually to see if it flows and really fits and just looks the way you thought it was gonna look. But man, from the very beginning until, you know, until construction starts and sometimes a little bit into construction, there's gonna be a lot of choices to be made and it's gonna seem overwhelming. So I recommend kind of work with a builder that breaks that down into chunks. You shouldn't have to, at the very beginning, you shouldn't have to pick what cabinet pools you're gonna have in your kitchen. That can be done a little bit later. So it should kind of be phased decisions, if you will, but no matter how you look at it, it's a lot of decisions and it can seem overwhelming at times. But once you get all those decisions made and the house is actually being built, it's kind of a big relief, a little bit of a weight taken off your shoulders, if you will. But that process, man, a ton of decisions. So that's the number two, just a ton of decisions and it can seem overwhelming at some points. All right, number three worst thing. This kind of goes into decisions a little bit and it's compromises. And we all think, man, I'm gonna build this custom home and it's my dream home and it's custom so I get to design it exactly the way I want, which is very true. You can do all that, but most of us don't have an unlimited budget. And this is where you just kind of have to say, you know what, here's the things that are super important to me. I recommend make up the list. You know, here's the things I have to have. Here's the things I really want. Here's the things that would be nice to have. 
And as you're going through that design process with the architect and the designer, just realize that you're probably gonna have to make some compromises. There's gonna be some things where, you know, maybe you don't get XYZ brand of appliances, but you get the A brand, which is really, really nice and essentially the same thing, but it's got a different tag on the front of it. So just think through the details of what you have to have and what you're willing to compromise on, because unless you have that unlimited budget, you're definitely going to have to make compromises. It's just the nature of the beast, whether you buy a resale home or you build a production home or you build a custom home, there's gonna be compromises made. We all just have to deal with a little bit. So I think doing planning at the beginning with yourself and your family and trying to think through, okay, what are the things we have to have we're not gonna give up on? And then work down that list to kind of some things that, yeah, hey, if we can afford it, it would be awesome to have, but we don't have to have it at the end of the day. You wanna make sure that whenever you build the house, you don't walk into it and you feel like you compromise too much because then you really don't get the benefit of building a custom home. So three, compromises. You're gonna have compromises throughout the build. And number four kind of rolls into that as well. And I say this is called the mission to save. Everybody gets nervous about a budget whenever you're building a custom home. You've all heard of cost creep and you know, depending on what, to, what builder you work with, they, you know, they have different types of contracts and is it a fixed price with allowances or is it a cost plus contract where, you know, it's, you know, the builders only make an X amount and then any of the changes, it's up to me. But if prices go up, then I got to, I take that cost on as well. Pros and cons to everything, right? But that mission to save, the reason I think that's super important to highlight as one of the worst things about building a custom home is because we all want to do it. We all want to save. And the problem with that mission to save is sometimes you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot a little bit. And here's where I'm going to say something about my process when my wife and I went through this, uh, through this process with building a custom home. We were so cost conscious and we had a budget and we couldn't go over the budget. We just knew what it was. And we got kind of sucked into this dollar per square foot estimator, you know, kind of in our heads. And we were so just bent on saving money and really sticking within exactly that budget or under that we, we wish we would have made our house overall about two or four foot deeper, two or four foot increments. That's kind of the magic thing in building just the way construction material comes out. And so it would not have cost us that much more <clears throat> to get a good bit more square footage and make the great room area of our house feel just a little bit better. It's great the way it is, but it would have been even better if it would have bumped it out a couple feet and the, probably the cost wouldn't have been relatively that much more it still would have cost more of course but relatively not that much more and it would have had a little bit better feel to it so just don't let yourself kind of get that tunnel vision about saving money and that mission to save that you overlook some of those changes or those big things that you're not going to be able to change later and instead can you do that and then can you save money somewhere else with maybe some things you could change later maybe you don't finish part of what you had planned on finishing the basement Maybe you don't do that epoxy floor on the garage or whatever it might be. So really just as you have that mission to try to save, which is a great thing overall, just make sure you don't shoot yourself in the foot by identifying those things. Hey, those are the things we can't skimp on. We got to make that right because we can't go back and change it. But maybe we can save over here because that's something, yeah, we can deal with this for a little bit. Maybe it's unfinished. Maybe it's not quite exactly what we want, but then in a couple years we can change it or we can go ahead and finish it out. So the mission to save. It's a great thing, but man, it could definitely bite you, bite you as well. So that's the number four thing is just that mission to save. Got to be cognizant of that. And then the fifth thing, I mean, this probably goes without saying, but it's stress and anxiety. It is a stressful time and it's not a short process, right? We're talking about at least an 18 month long process, six months in design, and then 12 months to actually get the house built. Plus, I don't know the front of it, however much time it took you to find that perfect lot that you really, really wanted. So, you know, you're a year and a half, two year process. And it's just, it's a lot of financial stress and anxiety. There's so many choices to be made. So like I said, you're gonna, you're gonna have stress about that. You're gonna be anxious about, man, did I make the right decisions? Even after the decisions are made and the builder says, hey, we can't change anything now. This is it, we're building this house, no more changes. You're still gonna, you're gonna be anxious about, man, did I make the right choice? Did I, did I pick the right floor covering? Did I, should we have moved that room a little bit? Is that doorway gonna be in the right position? All these things are going to be going through your mind. You're going to be laying awake at night, staring at the ceiling, thinking, man, I hope the framers are doing a good job right now. And those kinds of things are going to be going on throughout the whole process. So you're going to second guess yourself some. You're going to be concerned about the trades and are they doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. And that's really the benefit to minimize the stress and anxiety is to work with a great custom builder that's been through this process. They guide their clients through the process. They have in-house people that do it day in and day out that help guide them through the process. And they use only the best trades in the industry in the local area. So 
that stress and anxiety can be drastically minimized by having a great local custom home builder build your house for you. Um, so that one, I think you can control that one a little bit. You're still gonna have stress. You're still gonna be anxious about stuff. There's no getting around it. So I'm gonna recap real quick. Five, in my opinion, five worst things about building a custom home is the finances, just the financial, financial logistics of getting everything lined up in the right order. So many decisions to make. You're gonna be overwhelmed with the amount of decisions to make, but it's good because you get to make those decisions and it's your house. Compromises, just realizing that hey, it's that is what it is. None of us really, some of us, but not many of us have a truly unlimited budget. So you're gonna to have to compromise a little bit on what the house is at the end of the day. And then that mission to save, we all get sucked into it. Don't shoot yourself in the foot trying to save in areas that you shouldn't save. And then the last one is just the stress and anxiety that just it's just natural, comes with the process, it is what it is. So man, those are five, they sound pretty terrible. Doesn't sound like a fun process right now, building a custom home. But let me say this from personal experience. 110%, totally worth it at the end of the day. You get through that year, two year long process, you move into that custom home that's on that perfect lot that you love and you just kick back and you relax and you just, you love all the finishes that you picked out and the view that you have out your back door makes it 100% worth it. So definitely don't uh, don't don't just kind of say, eh, it sounds like too much work, I'm not gonna do it because it's worth it at the end of the day. But build with a great custom home builder that you have a lot of confidence in. And like I said, man, just any questions you have about this, it's a lot of information to think about building a custom home. So whatever questions you have, reach out, call, text, email us directly, whatever we can do to help out, that's what we wanna do. And like I said, if you're in the Colorado area, we'd love to have a conversation with you about maybe seeing if we're a fit to build your custom home. Take care.